brand new episode of Road to Edo 2024. You surely agree with me that it will be a catalyst to producing the right man that will occupy the position or that will occupy the office of the governor of Edo State. We already know the termination date of the incumbent, Mr. Godwin Obaseke. So, so many people are jostling and aspiring to take over from him. We don't know if Mr. Baseki will eventually publicly display his anointed candidate. We don't know if that card is in the offing. But this program is a platform where we prepare the minds of the voters, we prepare the mind of the people of Edo State as regards Edo 2024. My name is Egusa Agbunlao. It's a delight to have you on the program. And I also have with us today a special guest. He's not aspiring to be governor, but he's a man that is burdened with passion to have the right man occupy the office of the governor. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Wilson Umukoro Ejo. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you. Okay. So, we just get started with what I just said in my opening remarks. You are not aspiring to be governor. So, what troubles you as regard Edo 2024, if there is any? Well, I don't need to be troubled. Um, I don't need to be trouble for the governor of Edo State. I'm just a concerned person. Okay. I don't need to be a governorship candidate or have a special interest. My special interest is about the people. Okay. And what affects the people affects me because I am also the people too. And um, if we don't have a good government, we will not have a good road, we will not have a basic community, we will not have security, then we need to play a role as individuals, as collectively to put the right people into power so that we will not say, oh, I'm not a politician, I'm not party A, I'm not party B, so it's not my concern. It is our concern. And we all must come together and elect the right person who can lead us for the next four years. Thank you, uh, Wosin Omukoro Ejo. Uh, but looking at the political scene, as regard preparations ahead of the eventual election next year, there must be a process that will throw up the right candidates, gubernatorial candidates, all the different political parties. Now, in your thoughts, what should be the criteria to getting it right at the party level to producing the right candidates ahead of the governorship election? The first step in, in this regard is the, is the party primary. Okay. Awful time, we always miss it when we, when we elect a candidate to represent the party. Because whoever emerges from the party, it becomes the party affair. Okay. The party will not sell that particular candidate to everybody. Mm -hmm. It will bind on us. They will tell you party is supreme. So this time around, uh, my concern is that the party uh, 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 member should able to pick a candidate not to represent their interest alone, you know, but the interest of the common man. Okay. That is should be what should be in their mind. For example, uh, 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 the m m most time the the politician always say the governor's anointed. Whose mm -hmm. governor is anointed? Yes. Whoever the governor anointed will become the best party candidate. That is wrong. That have led us into dangerous uh, 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 problem in our society, mm. whereby the governor just anoint and everybody will just follow suit. The governor is not the people. The governor only have one vote. Yes, the governor can influence, but the governor should not be the one to determine. He must be the person and use all the uh, party apparatus and to force people to vote for that person, particular candidate. We saw what is playing out to today in River State, mm. where the governor uh, uh, have pink um, um, uh, Fubara. Uh, Fubara and today under within the place of how many days 
not even up to six months, they are already falling apart. And you know what happened. People are dying, fighting, injured, and the party is at stake. So, that, I, mean, I mean, the state is at stake. Mm. The same way when a governor can pick a, 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 a candidate, he will want that candidate to follow his bidding. And the man will say, no, you will not elect me. Uh, you are not the only one that elect me. It is a, it's a, it is a collective effort. They will say, no, I oppose you. I fought your election. I told my party people, I did this, I do that. So that's this is why this is what you must do. It really causes us a serious problem. So I don't want to hear uh, those states will also have the same uh, uh, experience, uh, even though in the, in the past we have some similar experience like that. I just want to hear by the, the, the party, the party uh, 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 who are qualified to vote, that is a delegate of each party should vote based on their conscience. But the question is, who, who, what is their conscience? Is money your conscience? Or the people is your conscience. Okay. Now you just took us to Portacourt, and uh, <laughs> I must, uh, I must uh, really ask you to comment more. Uh, but don't you think it is um, a wise decision on the part of any governor to actually introduce a candidate or an individual that he has confidence in that can continue? from where he has stopped, because government is continuum. Now, if a governor says, oh, my people, this man is credible. This man did well in my government. This man, from my own uh, views, this man can take these states to higher heights. Is that a wrong decision? Because you just mentioned what is happening in uh, Rivers. We can Yes. Actually introduce uh, Fubara. Fubara. Yes. And uh, is it not supposed to be the right thing? Well, if you ask me, the person from which angle you think a governor should market a candidate. Okay. First of all, the governor should see that every candidate, the governor should be neutral. Governor should be neutral. To say okay, because it's a party affair. Okay. Uh, the governor should not take side at all. Should let the party choose whoever. Because if you say the party is, is supreme, automatically the governor should not come to say this man not a candidate. But the governor can have a candidate. He can campaign for his candidate. But you must not compel everybody to go that same way. Okay. You market your candidate and convince the party member. This is why I think this person should take over from me. Yeah. It should fly our party flag. Okay. Based on so, so the person has also degree, has also experience, he has worked here, he has worked here, and I have confidence in him, and I think he will improve or do better than I have done. Mm. So I believe that he should be the one to protect our, our party. That is the governor interest. There's no nothing wrong about that. But why I'm having it is that where the government will now force people and begin to withdraw cars, withdraw contracts from people to compare them or issue contract or give them appointment mm. or give their certain appointment mm. and promote them and give them uh, land, uh, land property, yeah. whatever, to weigh them, force them without not convincing them by what this person can do. Mm. That is wrong because we always get it wrong from the primary. And you know, once a once party, okay, party A bring their, their candidate wrongly, party B bring a candidate wrongly, or the party B a candidate wrongly, the masses have no choice. Among the wrong one, we just pick one. <laughs> and that is wrong. Yes. Okay, but uh, before you continue, who is actually the leader of the party? The governor is the leader of the party. So he must have some influence over primaries or primary elections. Well, uh, for me, the party has a leader, but the, the, the change it to say the governor is the leader of the party. If you say the governor is the leader of the, of the party, what of the party chairman? What is his role? What is the role of the party chairman? Because that word is say the, the governor is the leader of the party. Mm. Have really caused many trouble in, in, in our political uh, arena because they are saying the governor is the leader of the party. So automatically, the, the party chairman, he, he, he become a mode. <laughs> if the constitution of the party says so, that the governor is leader of the party, what can I do? Yes. Now, if the governor is the leader of the party,
party, as a leader, that's more reason why you should take what neutral. For example, if you are a leader of a thing and you, should, you the, the government should not have a candidate, okay. you should play neutral because you are the leader of the party. We are about the, 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 the governor now, it's not having what a candidate, you become an umpire in your own matter, mm. a judge in your own case. Mm. So the government should not, be, should not have a right to become or to have any candidate at all. That is, that, that is my take. Yeah. The government should not have a candidate at all or campaign publicly. The party constitution, you know, there are a lot of things in this country we need to really amend. Okay. From party, yeah. from our, uh, our national constitution, there are a lot of things that we are going to have. If you really say government is a leader and the governor is not having a candidate, what do you think about that? To me, it is wrong. Definitely, say we should put it on the constitution, on the party constitution, that if the governor should be the leader of the party, then a leader should be what? Neutral. Um, I belong to party A. Okay. You are party A. Yes. Then we have the governor there. Yes. I want to run for election. You want yes. to run for an election. The governor who is our leader in this same party, who ought to be a neutral person to make sure the best of us uh, emerge, at the end of it, they not take side with you. I wouldn't think I would feel. That's always a problem in our political uh, system, which is wrong. So I'm appealing to our uh, uh, party member this time around, you must choose who govern you for the next four years. Remember, uh, there is no special rights for, or no, no special market for where PDP by their rights, or APC by their rights, or Labour Party their rights, or any political party by their rights, different from every other political yeah. party. If you collect anything to mortgage your conscience for the next four years, remember your sister, your in law, your brothers, everybody pertaining to you, even as to your children. They are still going to that same market to purchase things, and we all will suffer it. We say no more, I'm really, really excited with your comments. Let me take you to Edo State. Now, some persons believe that yes, governors can actually, or a governor can actually say, oh, this is my anointed candidate because of the capacity of this person. Now, looking at what happened in Edo State where Mr. Godwin of Baseki emerged, it was actually. It was actually introduced by his predecessor. Yeah. Do you have misgivings regarding Mr. Godwin Obaseki? Has he not performed creditably? Has he not won the hearts of the people of Edo State? Despite the fact that he was actually an anointed candidate of his predecessor. Now, if you, in your own, be honest with me, if you go back today and ask, he, and ask his his boss, who produced him to become the governor of Edo State, asked him, if Sobaseki performed very well, he will tell you he has performed woefully. He will be the best person to see whether he has performed or not, because he brought him in and he has ruled, for eight, and he has ruled the state for eight years. He should be the best person to say, oh, the person I give to Edo people have performed perfectly. And I think Adam Shule have apologized as many times, saying he regret bringing up Baseki. Edo people should forgive me. So in my own case, by predecessor, he never admitted that he, the governor of Edo State, Gordon Obaseki, had performed perfectly well. Okay. That is by his predecessor, yes. not me. Now, but, but if you are not asking me on my own, mm. then I can, I, I, I can make my own word, uh, comment whether if you have done well or if you have not done well. Okay. Now, we are not actually discussing Mr. Baseki, but yeah. I have a reason for that because he was actually introduced by his predecessor. Now, Mr. Godwin Obaseki has enjoyed accolades. Why? Some persons believe that, oh, this man does not behave like a politician. So he didn't bring a state money for politicians to, as in local palace, chop. And that angered some politicians. And you and I believe that the state needs funds to execute projects. So if you say his predecessor, may have some ill feelings or has apologized publicly, that is his personal opinion. Don't you think there are some other persons, though we don't have his own PRO here, but don't you think there are some other persons who are happy with what Obaseki has done? So, that is that. But let me take you away from that, uh, <laughs> from that aspect, because there uh, is mixed reactions. Yes. Some persons are praising Obaseki. Yes, yeah, some persons may say, oh, he could have done better. But bringing or introducing a candidate, 
can also be a blessing, can also be a curse. So it depends on the performance <laughs> of, of that person. Okay, now let's talk about why we are here. The primaries. The primaries before now, we've had um, insinuations in different quarters. There are money bags. Some of them don't come out to say, I want to contest, but from behind the scene, they detect what happens. They detect who wins the primaries. So can you rule out the impact of money bags in Nigerian political scene? It's, it is impossible to rule out money back for Nigeria political arena. It's not possible. But I've seen people who brought money into politics and they lost woefully. It is possible. You can bring all the money, you will lose woefully. If you put it only want you. I also see we have someone who doesn't have money at all. Like as you said, the governor will project you. You will just be riding on the wings of the governor. You will defeat all the money back. So I've seen a case, a scenario like that. But what I'm saying here, what we are looking at is that we look at the aspect of let the party member should vote based on the interest of a common man not on your conscience because your conscience is money mm. their conscience is money so no need to say vote on on your conscience because there's no conscience anymore in nigeria politics today the way it is right now you should vote but on the interest of the common man not your conscience because your conscience is money but vote on the interest of the common man this person will perform better this person deserves this opportunity this person this is what they have done before this person is what he tend to do. Let not vote for people we don't know. People who don't have the background. People who, who people we don't know where they where they are where they bad, where they school, their marital status. We don't know anything about them at all. We don't vote for such people. People you come from nowhere. We need to vote for people we can reach, we can touch, who are also feel us. People are feed the masses. People have contributed in the way, we, what we were doing before. Look at what they have what, what contributed to society. We should look at and, and just uh, uh, not just uh, uh, the person, but also married too. Based on that, we can take the right decision. That let's give this person a try, so that if we give room for for people to come, people the best people to come into politics. There are good people to become governor president in our state. As of as of red member, as of a every member, the senate, but. They are scared that I have money, I have influence, I have a name, but they will not vote for me because I don't have a godfather. Let the, let the party, because we're talking about a party member, let the party members become the godfather of those kind of people. If we do that, then we will have a good system of government. Thank you, Mr. Wilson uh, Omokoro Ejo. Uh, but another aspect that seemed to um, give uh, cause for concern especially as um, we prepare for Edo 2024, has to do with academic uh, records. We've seen that most times, most times, it is the courts that determine who eventually occupy public office. And that is an abnormal scenario. So there are cases where a particular person will say, oh, I have a university degree. At the end of the day, uh, there will be uh, some kind of litigations. Uh, some persons will be able to unearth some secrets and say, oh, no, this man, he never got the Chicago University degree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this man, he never got the Toronto, Canada mm -hmm. degree. I'm just trying to take you back to some celebrated cases that has to do with academic records. Now, do you think the parties or INEC should do more in terms of screening of candidates that stand for election to avoid these litigations? Well, um, let me say this yes. to politicians. It is clear you don't need an university degree to, consent, to contest the office of the governor or president. You give yourself unnecessary trouble. You don't need to impress anybody. 
because the best way to impress the people is by your performance. Even though you have the best university from Harvard, from Cambridge, from Oxford, and you become a governor, and you do not perform and impress the, the people, then the degree is useless. Honestly. So well, I think it's not your degree is more important. What the, once you meet the requirement, leave the rest the degree. Bring out what you can offer the people. What is your manifesto that you are offering, that you are driving with? What, what is the blueprint? There are some people, they don't know who they are those states. Hmm. They don't know some villages. And you want to govern such states, and you think uh, uh, you, you will perform. Even within this Benin metropolis, people don't know some street in Jaroe. They don't know how bad the Zulus. So people have not passed some place in the Wotubu, in the Wori area, in Ubahi. People don't know some even market name like Ubogu market. They don't know what the market called Ubogu. You don't care. But you want to become a governor of the state. You have not studied your place. That is the most place. That, that is the most thing to do. It's not a bad certificate. I want to Oxford, Chicago. No, 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 no. You don't need all that at all. Study your environment and know what is the problem of your environment and say, I have the answer. I have the solution. Then I come out to contest for that. When you, when you go for that, for, for that world, solution and provide a solution to solve that problem. So, you know, INEC is like, um, uh, uh, I would like to call it, it's an organization you want to contest. They believe that your, pro your party have already cleared you. So we are not the people to stop you for not contesting. Yeah. You go to the university, bam. Go to the university, bam. bam. Finish. They just stamp it. Yeah. They will not do any verification. There's no even, there's no even a, a time frame for any to do proper verification to say, okay, let me call some university to confirm whether this person at the university, there's no time. There's no opportunity for that at all. So INEC is just doing their job. They, they are being paid by the federal government to call on the election, print ballot paper to run the election. As far as they are concerned, all they would want to do is for people to come and vote. That's all. That's INEC. So I believe that if we must do that, the, re, the, the real solution to all this problem is to go back to uh, the constitution amendment and make sure all this will be on the constitution. That once INEC is bringing anybody, it's not bad on INEC that all those documents they are, they are tendered before INEC, they are all authentic. INEC have done their finding. So that once anything goes wrong, we know who to hold. If you put that body on INEC, INEC will now go back to drawing board and make sure whoever is contesting, they make their own personal finding. If, for example, somebody contests election t today and the person found out that the person's result did not, has a result, has what? A problem or a forged result. What is INEC penalty? What is the INEC penalty? That is what INEC should be. You know, you know sir. NBC as a regulatory body of, of a radio station and TV station. There are some things I want to say right now. Yes. You won't allow me to oh, say that, it. That's correct. Why, why, why are you not allowing me to say it? Because sanction. Because they will sanction yes. this station. And when they sanction this, this station, they will say, oh, who was on the duty that allow Komedu Mokoro be saying order? They say, Mr. Bolaho, yes. then your, your, your station will give you query. Yes. Or also, also give you what issue was a penalty. Mm. That you, I, I don't know whether it's, it's to detract from your salary, part of the money, nobody knows. Yes. So even you say you have to guide your job, that I will not say any utterance that go against the NBC rule. Yes. True or false? You are correct. So if there's any sanction as a today against INEC that if they find out any candidate that run for an election and the person I even sworn in as a president or as a governor but they were able to find out that that certificate that INEC accept is a false certificate INEC will be penalized and whoever accept that whoever will be on duty whoever that INEC commissioner that accept that should also be penalized or will also be sent to jail or sue which if we have something on board then the INEC can do the idea. with this system INEC can do anything thank you very much we've been talking with Wilson Umukoro Ejo it's a pleasure it's a pleasure and uh, I believe that if you are there you've enjoyed his comments you've enjoyed the conversation on Road to Edo 2024, and we've centered a discussion primarily on the primary election of the different political parties as a way of getting it right, getting right candidates. And my guest has emphasized the need for different political parties to do background checks on aspirants 
and for uh, the people, the political party uh, members to actually be saddled with the responsibility of electing their candidates. The issue of money bags should not be allowed. And my guess is uh, pessimistic about governors anointing candidates. He believes that the people should do that. Misreactions reactions to what has happened previously. Governors, some governors have uh, anointed candidates. Some, can, some of such candidates have done very well. Some others have not done well. So it is left for the people. It is left for the political parties to do their job right. So, Mr. Mokoro, thanks for being a part of the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, on behalf of the producers, the production team, my name is Erosa Bola. Do have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.